Oh yes, welcome back to I was going to say Lindy Vanner. Oh yes, welcome back to Sprinter Van Conversions everybody. You are joining me, my name is Sam. Thank you so much for watching. And today in this video, we are going to be doing a gas installation on this uh, medium wheelbase Sprinter Van Conversion that we are doing at the moment. Gas is always a touchy subject uh, when it comes to, you know, internet forums and Facebook groups and stuff. Everyone's got their own opinion, but the fact is there is a right and a wrong way to do it. And uh, in today's video, I'm going to go through the right way that you should be able to plumb in your gas hob into your camper van. Oh yes, thanks so much for joining me in today's video, guys. Now, I have done a video like this in the past, but this one is going to be much more updated and uh, I'm much more reliable. In fact, I think I took the other video down. So this video is gonna outline how you're meant to plumb in your gas system in your van uh, safely and efficiently and effectively. It's so much so that it could get signed off by uh, a gas safe engineer if you wanted it to be. And I will be getting that done on this van myself as I do with all the vans that I convert just for peace of mind. Now there's several criteria that you've got to fulfill when you're doing a gas installation on a camper van. And I'll try and list those points right now if I can remember them all off the top of my head. But the first thing is that all of the plumbing in the van outside of the sealed gas locker has to be in copper pipe. I use this eight mil copper pipe. It's called Microbore, um, but it's eight mil copper pipe. Pretty flexible for getting around lots of, you know, awkward angles and stuff in a camper van. It's such a small space. So eight mil copper pipe is what I use and it handles the pressure of the uh, propane bottle really well. The next thing that you've got to use on those copper pipes is compression fittings. So if you don't know what they are, I'll just quickly try and find one or two. So you can see here, these are compression fittings. They are um, basically, they have an olive inside. You put the olive on the pipe and then you do up the nut onto the fitting and then it squashes it down and makes a, a gas tight seal. And they're good, but I try and limit as many joints in the gas system as possible. And in my installs, I have one connection at the appliance and one connection within the gas locker. That way you limit any chance of any leaks and any, you know, badness. One thing that I will say is inside the compression fittings you you're meant to use copper olives. This is super important. Copper is much softer than brass which is usually what comes in these fittings and you can see here I've bought this isolation valve for this system that I'm doing and it comes with brass olives inside but that won't pass gas regs. So you must have copper olives in all of your compression fittings. The next thing is that your gas bottle has to be in a sealed gas locker. Now this gas locker does not have to be metal, it just has to be sealed. It's not to prevent explosion or to protect you in event of explosion, it's to protect gas leaking into the body of the van, into the habitation area of the van. Um, so you must have a sealed gas locker and there's a few things that you have to do to achieve that. So number one with your gas locker is you need to have at least a minimum of 50 mil lip at the bottom of the door. So what I mean by that is when you open the door on the locker, there has to be a 50 mil gap right at the bottom. This is because gas is heavier than air. It drops to the bottom. And so if you've got this lip at the bottom of the door, even if your, you know, even if your door is sealed, if the seal lets by for whatever reason, then the gas is still within the gas locker. Now, when I build the gas lockers, I make them out of plywood um, and I silicon all of the joints on the inside of the gas locker to make them dead sealed. And that brings us on to the next point. And that is that you need to have a dropout vent in your gas locker. Now, in theory, the dropout vent size depends on how much propane or butane or how much gas you're carrying in your gas locker. I can't remember what the exact calculation, what the exact ratio is in terms of square millimeters to weight of uh, gas, but I know that these gas lo uh, these um, dropout vents are more than enough. And you can see here, this one is a 600 square millimeter gas locker drop dropout vent, and that goes all the way through the bottom of the van to the outside. And like I said before, like I said before, gas is heavier than air, so if there is a leak within the gas locker 
then the gas drops out the bottom of the van and you don't have you know explodable gas um, uh, within your van and the last thing uh, about the locker itself is that you need to have some way of closing the door so I've got these little bolt latches they're very primitive and I use a draft excluder around the door to seal up the door so there's no chance of any leaks uh, you know getting out and last but not least we have one more type of connection in our gas system that comes off the bottom of the hob and we have a threaded connection we've got this silver connector and this brass elbow and they screw into each other so you can see if I just so you can see here it's got a thread and that threaded connection to the other fitting is what seals you against your gas leak but then what I use around that is something called Loctite 55 which is a thread of Loctite which seals any gaps in that threaded connection this stuff is amazing and I highly recommend it and last but not least the connection to the hob itself the connection to this elbow has to go through this brass elbow and this one is actually 15 mil connection but you buy a thing called a reducing set and that goes in the compression fitting of the elbow. Now I use two elbows just to root my copper pipe out from behind the kitchen cabinet easily. You might use different fittings for yours. Again, you need to use copper olive in it because it will come with uh, a brass olive. But you can see here, this is called a reducing set. And when, when I was doing my re research in the first van that I did this install in, you know, it took me forever to try and find this tiny little piece of uh, fitting uh, to try and figure out even if it existed. And then finally I went to a handy plumber's merchant and yeah, sure enough, they recommended that I use it. It's all connected up. You can see that that is screwed into that fitting. That is screwed into this fitting and that is compressed with that fitting. Next up before I forget it, before I forget to mention it, the the appliances that you install have to have a gas cutoff on them. So what I mean by that is if they if the gas coming out of the appliance is not ignited after a certain amount of time, I think it's about 5 or 10 seconds the gas appliance will actually cut off the supply of the gas itself automatically. This is a really important safety feature that your appliances absolutely must have in your camper van. The next thing that we need to make sure is that our gas is connected up with a regulator. Now this is a regulator, it's a two stage regulator, bulkhead regulator that goes inside the gas locker and basically what that does is it takes the pressure from your gas bottle which is high pressure and it regulates it and downgrades it to something like 30 millibar. Yes, so this regulator is a 30 millibar regulator and that's also the pressure that the appliances in the van should work at as well. It's really important to have a two-stage regulator. These single-stage regulators that just clip on the top of bottles, if the insides of one of those goes wrong and it breaks, then you've got high pressure gas coming into your van. Nobody wants that. To go from the gas bottle to the regulator, you need a high pressure hose. So here we have a rubber hose. Uh, it's the only one that's allowed in the camper van and it's within the gas locker, just going between the uh, gas bottle and the regulator itself. And just lastly, before my shoulder falls off, <laughs> the gas bottle has to be secured within the gas locker in at least two different ways. So there are grills that you can get that go on the floor of the van that have the perfect circumference or diameter of the bottom of the bottle that slots into and then you can have one strap around it or you can have two straps around your gas bottle. I always go for that method because if somebody wants to swap out the gas bottle of course the straps are adjustable and you could have a different size but if you have a purpose-made base inside your gas locker then you know and a different type of bottle might not fit and lastly a couple of tools that you might need for your gas installation one is a pipe bender this is super handy for bending the 8mm pipe now 8mm pipe is super easy to bend just make sure you don't kink it but um, you can bend it by hand, no problem. This pipe bender gets really tight bends easily, the type of which I would, yeah, that it would be impossible to not kink the pipe if I wasn't using this. The next thing I use is a bit of leak detector spray. This is from the plumber's merchant. 
You can also use like fairy washing up liquid mixed with water and spray that on all the joints. You'll soon see any bubbles, but yeah, leak detector fluid, handy stuff. And of course you need a copper pipe cutter. I've got a little adjustable one here that is perfect for the eight mil copper pipe. Uh, but you can use any type of copper pipe cutter as long as it's adjustable or a specific 8mm one if they even make one. And of course a handy dandy adjustable spanner for getting that threaded connection on. Um, but yeah, any spanner or something to do up the connections. Just fast forwarding now guys, we've gone forward in the future. <laughs> a little bit of time travel for you. Uh, here at Sprinter Van Conversions, but I just wanted to give you an update on how the gas system looks as it's finished. You can see here is the gas hob, the plumbing goes underneath as you know, and then I've got a little hatch here in the top of the gas locker to be able to access, to be able to access the bottle itself so I can reach my arm in and turn it on and off from uh, from the habitation area of the van. One of the other stipulations actually is that the gas bottle is not able to be removed from the gas locker from within the habitation area of the van, which is why the access to the gas locker is from underneath the bed in the garage area at the back of the van because that way it's not accessed from the habitation area. But I wanted to put that hatch in just so I know that I can manually, physically turn the gas bottle off when it's not being used, turn it on when it needs to be used. That way there's no excuses for leaving it on, you know. And now just under here, you can see within the gas locker, got the regulator, got the pigtail pipe to the top of the tank, got my two straps on the bottle, and the dropout vent is in there behind there. My gas engineer was meant to be here yesterday to certify it, but unfortunately he didn't turn up. He's re rearranged for Monday. Since this video is coming out tomorrow on Sunday, I just wanted to finish it off here. And uh, I will let you know in the comment section below if anything came up with the inspection, but I am 99% sure that it's going to be signed off without any problems at all. Thanks very much for joining us in today's video, guys. If you found it interesting, give us a thumbs up and subscribe, turn on notifications. I know perhaps it wasn't the most entertaining video, but I hope it was informative if you're doing your own van conversion. And just once again, I am not a gas engineer myself. I am only a DIYer or a van converter. I don't specifically have uh, expertise in the gas but I've got some experience now, so I hope this can help you out. Don't forget to tune in next Sunday, and we'll see you then. Over and out.